So I've had some contact for quite a number of years with, uh, with China with regards to their, their space exploration program. Um, and I say I'm always very, very impressed. I think the, uh, the achievements of the Chinese program are extraordinary. I think the ambition is fantastic. Um, and I think that uh, it's always uh, exciting to, to watch the, the evolution and the, the advancement of the space exploration in China and also to see how excited the whole country is about this program. I think it's really a wonderful thing. So the place where Chang'e 6 is landing is the, uh, on the far side on, in an area called the South Pole Aitken Basin, which is a huge impact crater. And this crater was one of the oldest and largest craters in the solar system. The moon is very ancient. Its surface hasn't changed a lot in a very long time but it's experienced the same environment, the same big events that the Earth has too. But because the Earth has an active geology, the geological record of these early events has been lost. So if you want to understand what happened in the, really the early periods of the Earth, around the time when life was first forming on Earth, if you want to understand that, the only place we can go to find out about it is the surface of the moon. My observation is that, that China set some ambitions about what it wanted to achieve and then just set out and went systematically, just went and did it. And I think that it's been a step-by-step -step approach to, to implement a, a long-term plan. That's at least what I've observed. I think it's been very impressive. Landing on the lunar far side is something which has been made possible by the positioning of relay spacecraft. So from the lunar far side, we can't communicate directly with Earth. And so the positioning of relay spacecraft to be able to allow that communication has really been the deciding factor that's made that possible. Uh, and so I think that the, the lunar far side is somewhere that agencies from around the world have talked about exploring for a long time. Uh, it's very exciting to see that, that China are doing it now. What do you make of the comments coming from NASA about China wanting to take over the moon and, and control all the water? And then what do you make of those comments and about the concerns that they have in, in working with the CSA? So I think that countries around the world are becoming more and more interested in the opportunities the moon has to offer. So we know that the moon may have resources, that could become useful at some point in the future. And so you know, the European Space Agency and NASA and the Chinese Agency and, and others around the world are going to the moon. And part of the rationale, part of the, the reason we want to do that is to understand those resources. And before we actually understand what's there, everything else is, is really just hypothetical. And so the first step is really to go to the surface of the moon to make the measurements, to do the scientific research that will tell us what resources are available. And I think the important next step is to, to understand how we as an international community are going to work around this. There are legal frameworks in place to tell us about how we ought to work together. Uh, and I think that there are discussions internationally about what we should do about that in the future. But the first step is really to, to do the science to understand what we're talking about really.